Well, this broadcast is inappropriate for all ages, right here on Hashtag We Are Movie Club. Salutations, I am Cam Rai, and I am conversation ready. Um, uh, we are here to talk about Thor, the Dark World. I actually got somebody asking after me, so I'm a little distracted there. We'll go through this real quick. Um, if you saw last week's movie, which was Thor, you kind of got more of the same. Um, and I'm realizing part of the reason why I never really got into Thor, um, especially in the comics and whatnot, is uh, quite frankly because it's the Superman problem all over again. He is too damn strong. Um, so they've got to come up with like these ridiculous ridiculous um universe ending scenarios um just to 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 have him have a challenge because like in the first movie he goes against the Jotuns and he takes on the almost the entire army on his own uh he kills the the big bad uh behemoth thing in one shot by like shooting through its mouth When he's at the beginning of this movie, there's a village battle because they're like in this process of restoring order across the nine realms or whatever. Um, <laughs> it's really funny because it's when Natalie Portman's character, uh, Jane Foster, confronts him about it. It's like, You've been gone for like two years. It's like, I'm so sorry. There was slaughter across the nine realms. We had to fix the Bifrost and restore order. And she's like, Well, as excuses go, that's pretty good. <laughs> it's like obviously like Natalie Portman goes Sindari on him um, she slapped him a couple of times too that was so good um, let's watch her do anything I really could um, but uh, <laughs> they play off each other really well Helmsworth and Portman um, they, they really do uh, and we, we definitely get to see her uh, have a slightly bigger role this time before she was just kind of the love interest um she was barely a mechanic uh, for the plot because she takes care of him when he comes to Earth a little bit. So honestly, she hits him with his car more than uh, with her car than she does take care of him. Uh, so in this time around, like we're we're focusing on her and her little adventure through everything, and what a wonderful, crazy, mixed up thing it is. And we get to see like kind of her reconcile a little bit with what Thor actually deals with on a, on a semi-regular basis, what his life as a god is. Um, and so, of course, by the end of it, he fucking leaves her again, um, which is sad. I, and I, I realize I'm, I'm talking to you about the most interesting part of the movie to me right now. <laughs> um, and then we'll go back to some of the actual plot. Um, so she's all depressed and crazy again. Um, as you would be, like, a god comes down and picks you, uh, out of anyone to, to kiss or cuddle or, or bang, whatever the hell they were doing when we weren't watching, um, and then leaves, like, how do mortal men stack up again? We see her on the date at the beginning of the movie, uh, after some of the battling, uh, or whatnot, um, and she could barely function as, like, a normal person. Uh, and then uh, even Darcy was saying that like she's been all fucking mopey and weird. Though Darcy has the shit timing of all shit timing to talk about whatever it is she wants to talk about. Um, and it was kind of cute seeing her make out the intern. Uh, it was really cute watching someone who's like five foot dip someone who's like six foot something. Because he's a tall, gangly guy, but she took control of the situation. It was like, you're coming here. <laughs> <laughs> or I, I that's just how I imagine it because by the time they get teleported they're already kissing um, which was kind of a weird choice on, on Jane's part but maybe she was just trying to make sure her friend was still alive yeah I'm going to give her the benefit of the doubt um, that was like one of my other favorite parts of the movie just you seeing this come up organically um, is being able to fight by remote control via tele with teleporters um, it's like if Gladys uh, 
had to take up arms and fight to save the the infrastructure of her company. Um, Because if you think about Gladys, Gladys' directive is to test. If the um, facility is destroyed, she can't test. Therefore, she must protect the facility. Therefore, she must... Um, fight. <laughs> so if like there was an alien invasion that happened to like venture into Aperture Science, Gladys would bust out uh, some portal guns and some turrets, uh, and and make short work of them. I'm sure. Um. Oh, okay, so if we're looking at the actual plot here, let me actually go through my notes. Um, this is all about space elves and the eighth the ether. The either the aether, whatever. Um, and I'm really confused where all these elves came from. Because... I just... The story's kind of a little contradictory. Now, like, it's like Svartheim or something, right? Svartelheim? Um, Norse is so damn hard to pronounce. Uh, just being honest, it absolutely is. Jotunheim is, like, getting off easy. Asgard, pff, You have to say it all the time, so you make it a simple thing to say. Midgard, pff, um, but there's a couple other ones that have just, you drizzle, uh, uh, Savartalheim is, yeah, it's, it's bad. Um, but it's, it's not as bad as it could be, I'm sure. So just as long as I don't call it Fartheim, um, I'm, I'm, I'm okay. Um, but yeah, so like, I don't understand like why they have space lasers and, um, They've got these crushable things that turn them into, like, powerful ogres um, to fight the Asgards. And the Asgards looked like they were getting their asses handed to them because they didn't have tech to, to fight with. They were using, like, swords and shields and spears. And this happens later in the movie, too. And I don't understand why that's considered acceptable as far as Asgard is concerned. Um, or how they're keeping... Order of the Nine Realms with that, because later on they even have like singularity bombs, is what or, or grenades is what I've been calling them, um, where, for lack of better words, it generates a small black hole, a singularity, um, and like uh, so everything gets sucked into the super dense uh, mass. Now there are a couple situations that happen where. Uh, I'm going to call bullshit on physics, um, particularly the one where Thor tries to save Loki. The point at which Loki was sucked up would mean that it was inescapable. Um, therefore, Thor wouldn't be able to do it. But these were not; these aren't like super black holes. They're just little baby ones, I guess. So maybe. Uh, but also, too, it's like we got to remember Loki's trying to fake his own death so that he can be free. Um, so I think that was really what it was, is that that was Loki's, like, first attempt at faking his death. So we're really lucky, like, Thor even grabbed him. Because <laughs> it could have just been an al- another illusion, and been like, oh, brother, I thought, um, you'd miss me. <laughs> I just wanted to see the look on your face. Um, and so, like, in that scene, too, I'll, I'll, I'll redress that scene in a minute. Um, but this, this ether thing, and, like... The Infinity Stone storyline is such bullshit. I really hate that, like, the Marvel Universe decided to go with that. Uh, it was such, at least for the movies, because it was such a big thing in the comics, and then you get Thanos, um, a cosmic-level hero or villain, if ever there was one, um, and then we've got to kind of take the cheap approximation we've got with the, with the movies and and these heroes and, and deal with that. And, well, it really doesn't fit their M.O. It's They're defending earth um they're uh, or asgard is defending the nine realms sure sure whatever but like gar- the guardians are like, defending the galaxy um a lot of people are just concerned with this planet or uh, even small portions of this planet um like you, black panthers dealing with wakanda and fuck they had enough to deal with just on their own they they didn't need to involve anybody else but um oh um okay 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 Cool, 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 cool. <laughs> Fuck it. I don't know why I picked that up from Abed. It's not funny. Um, so, just like the last movie, there's a lot of contention over the throne. I, I have no idea why Odin has a dad. I have no idea why it's so important that Odin, like, 
retire to a field of lilies or whatever the fuck he eventually does. Um, cause like, in, I think in Ragnarok we actually see it, but, um, there's all this like foot stamping and, and belly aching about like, well, oh, Thor needs to take up the mantle. And then Thor's like, but I like a girl. And then Loki's like, it's my birthright. And then Odin's like, your birthright was to die. Cause he likes mocking Loki. Um, he's like, I saved you from the gutter. Um, which honestly probably wasn't true. Um, he probably could have left him there and he would have been fine. Uh, one of the other Jotuns would have picked him up, raised him as a Jotun. He would have learned Jotun ways, probably learned to hate Asgard. Um, maybe he would have been like a prince. Maybe Yaffe would have found him and raised him and treated him as his own ward. Maybe Odin stole Loki from a life of glory. Now, the weird part is, is that Freya and Loki actually have similar uh, mystical illusionary powers. So I don't know if he, that was like nurture versus nature or what. Uh, I'm not sure. Um, yeah. So, okay. So like Sif and the Warriors three, so they, those four make a, a, a standard kind of adventuring RPG party. Like they're, they're running around doing their thing a lot of the time. And then Thor comes in as a super NPC, kind of a deus ex machina. Um, so they, they just try to manage things and, and mitigate the number of deaths until he gets there, I guess. That's really what I'm seeing, because it's like, they don't seem to be able to really handle anything. And then as soon as Thor gets there, he's like, well, I'll just handle all of it. Um, it's, it's, it's akin to like if you were eating cupcakes... And you're just like, oh, this is so many cupcakes. You better whittle them down. And then eventually Thor gets there and he's just like, oh, I ate the cupcakes. Um, oh, but look at this. Uh, Jane on a date. Uh, equipment starting acting up. Um, Selvig lost his mind and gets put in an insane asylum. Um, <coughs> they, they run into some kids playing with uh, dimensional rifts. That are going back and forth between apparently Svarthelm or Svartalheim and uh, Midgard, and um, they're throwing all kinds of stupid things in there, like shoes and the car keys and Jane's cell phone. Apparently, I, I don't know why these scientists uh, or alleged scientists would fucking do that. Um, it doesn't make any sense. Um, and they did that, and none of them. Like, through a rope. No one of them let a rope in. I've seen Exorcist. Like, you, you tie a rope around your waist and, and jump through. Um, now, granted, maybe you don't want to do that. But, hell, you could at least um, throw a rope in. See if it comes out the other side. Then try to tie, like, it back together. And pull and see what happens. Um, that's scientific curiosity for you. Uh. I don't know why I made that noise. Um, I don't know if it was my copy or if... Like, I really need to research this. Like, there were no subtitles for the Elvish. Uh, none none at all um, that I could see anyways. Uh, the way I was watching it, it's a little unconventional. Um, but uh, maybe if I were to play it through, like, VLC or something or some other type of uh, application... Um, okay, of course, Loki gets thrown in prison, like, because this movie comes after, what is that movie? Um, the Avengers in New York, uh, where he tries to, uh, rule over humanity, etc., etc. Because, yeah, Selvig says he's had a god in his brain, I don't recommend it, um, and Loki's being punished, uh, by life in prison, no less, uh, and he's so untrustworthy looking that even when they the elves sneak a guy in there with an ogre crushable, uh, and he does that, and he ki nearly kills everybody else in his cell, and he starts breaking out the other prisoners uh, for backup, you'd think he'd try not to kill the guys in his cell then, but um, he doesn't break out Loki. But Loki still tells him, like, hey, you should probably take the stairs on the left. Because uh, the stairs on the right are full of fighting. <laughs> <laughs> so Loki's actually instrumental in that ogre getting to where he needs to be during some of this shit. Um, like, 
in particular, like, uh, they start putting, for whatever reason, they start putting a bubble shield over Asgard. Um, like, their anti-air air artillery, air artillery is not, like, up to snuff. Heimdall can't even see him. He takes out one of the small ships, I think, uh, on his own with just a sword, which is fucking awesome that he took out a spaceship with a sword. Um, but they, they start leading attacks. Some of the anti-air hits. Most of it misses. Uh, one little ship manages to get through all the way to the castle because the ogre ends up breaking the bubble shield. Um, and out of that ship rolls like a small platoon of, of guys with laser rifles. Um, and since the Asgardians have swords and spears and often no shields, uh, they die in mass. Um, and then they even throw the little singularity grenades around, which are a really cool effect, I really gotta say. Um, and there was that one guy oh, I felt so bad um he threw it and he specifically you could see the direction and everything he specifically threw it behind the guy so that when he got sucked in uh like it alternated with his body and rock from the pillar behind him um that was fucking cruel um but Malekith short long story short Malekith ends up doing this whole thing um Thor doesn't get there in time but he's there long enough to threaten and and fight Freya um, and I want to say it's the ogre showing up. Yeah, that stops Freya from killing Malekith, which she should have just cut his throat when she had the chance. The whole movie would have been done. Fuck me. Um, and then Thor's stupid ass when he finally does show up, because he took his sweet time getting there. He probably was enjoying the fight, honestly. Um, Freya's getting stabbed, and then he tries to lightning, but he he does it in the most controlled way I've ever seen him use lightning. So that it only hits part of the guy's face, which of course is going to flay him out, because it's lightning. Um, but like, you would think he would just flood the room, basically. <laughs> um, or he would have thrown the hammer, and then the hammer would have taken off his head. But it, like horror movies, it's uh, plot, the plot's driven on stupidity. On, on mistakes that people make so that uh, other people can take up our, our opportunities. It's ridiculous. It's preposterous. It's Thor. Um, so, uh, so yeah, by that point, like, Jane's actually starting to be affected pretty heavily by the, by the either. Uh, up until this point, she's like, she's accidentally blown up some guards and security officer and police officers, but like no one died. Um, but it's starting to really hurt her. She's seen visions. Um, and Thor and Heimdall know that since Malekith is after Jane, they've got to move her. Um, it's just not tactically sound. And Odin's being a big baby. He's like, well, we'll, we'll die to the last man. And it's like, that's not how you win, buddy. It's cool, it's honorable, but there are other options. Um, and then you can still fight to the last man. Um... So they break Loki out, uh, or Thor and the the Warriors 4. Thor, Sif, and the Warriors 3. Whatever you're supposed to say for all that. And then, like, add insult to injury, because I haven't talked about this yet, but, like, Sif likes Thor. She wants to polish his hammer. Whatever you want to say. Fine. Um, she's in love with him. Uh... And she's jealous of Jane. She doesn't understand what this mortal has that she doesn't. And that's come up a couple times, I think, throughout everything. Uh, and insult to injury, they, he, Thor sends Thif to fet, or Sif to fetch Jane. And I, I really kind of was like, that's not cool, man. At least respect Sif's feelings on the matter. Um, and it's not like he didn't know, because Sif had a small conversation about him watching Jane, like, the night before all this happened. Um, but the whole point is that they break Loki out in this super elaborate, dumbass plan, and one of the best parts of it is, is that Loki's actually actively berating him about how ridiculous and silly this plan is, and then Thor pushes him out of a moving spaceship. <laughs> into one of the the, the, the Asgard airboats um, that the Raphael guy has ready to go and um, 
I don't know. I thought it was. I thought it was really funny. But they go to Svartalheim and um, confront Malekith. Uh, to try to minimize the losses. Um, and they do this really cool thing where, like, Loki's betraying Thor and cuts off Thor's hand. Um, and I really appreciate it. It was a really cool effect. And, honestly, it was really good to see Thor knock down a peg. Because, um, like, he falls down clutching his his nub. And, um, yeah, I actually felt for Thor. Don't, don't think me that heartless. It's like, it was good to see Thor in a situation where, like, he was hampered, even if it was fake, but I was like, oh, poor Thor. That was messed up. Because I, who knows, maybe it's that hand that rec- that Mjolnir recognizes. Because in that moment where Mjolnir, like, flies past and then hits the ground, I was like, oh, what happens to Mew Mew? Um, and Thor and the ogre, like, fist punch pretty evenly. So that shows you how powerful those ogre crushing pellet things actually are now granted they, they it permanently def- disfigures them for life but whatever um so loki dies like i, I mentioned the time where he gets there but uh, i think he dies in an explosion if i remember right like trying to take out some of the guy some of the other guys or he fakes his own death that way uh thor and jane find the shelter where her cell phone is which is ringing, and which that's ser- too ser- serendipitous. I couldn't couldn't take that one. Um, let's see how long we're going here. Twenty minutes. Um, oh god, I can't believe her car still. It's all fucked to hell, but her car's there and it works. That was amazing. That was all is all hell. Um, and then pretty much the rest of the movie is the battle on Earth. Where like they're they're dipping through portals back and forth, uh, they end up on top of a building, sliding down like helpless children. <laughs> At one point, I was just, it really got me. I was like, <laughs> who thought of this shot? It's amazing. Um, and one of the the really neat things was that Mjolnir, uh, as Thor is calling it, is trying to actively find Thor. It was like a lost dog. So like it continually goes off planet to go to Svartalheim. And then comes back uh, as Thor like teleports back to Earth uh, to the point where it's like Jane recovers Darcy in the intern, um, and it's like Darcy, Eric, uh, what was the guy's name? Uh, it's, it's, it's like Samuel or something. And then like uh, Mjolnir flies by and she's like Mew Mew. <laughs> um, Darcy was a good bit of levity um, to the movie. I think she she played an important role. Um, and of course, yeah, Jane. What I'm upset about is Jane's depressed after Thor leaves again. Um, and the end of the thing is Thor, uh, pretty rightfully turning down the role of king, um, as he's he's preferential to to play on Midgard for the for the time being. Uh, but of course, he's got to bounce back and forth uh, as his duties are needed. Um, but Loki's on the throne, so who knows what happened to Odin? We find out in Ragnarok, but um, that's the point of doing a cliffhanger: is that like, oh no, where are you going to be? Um, so overall, I think it's definitely worth the watch. Uh, I'm not the Thor fan. That I think I needed to be to watch these back to back for the week, um, but we're we're done unless Thor Ragnarok happens to be on Amazon right now, and then I'll do it. Oh, it is. I hadn't expected that. I'd already decided we we're gonna do Captain America. All right, uh, we will be interrupted with Thor. And th- this was pretty fucking funny, so I'll probably end up buying this one, too. Oh, no, it's on pre-order. So, yeah, so next week we'll do Captain America the First Avenger. And then when Thor Ragnarok comes be- co- actually becomes available, um, we'll, uh, we'll do that as well. Um, so I'll just keep waiting. Keep waiting for you. Yeah, um, and, and Grant, Thor is a little funny, and Loki is a little funny, and... Uh, having Strange interact with Loki like he did was pretty funny, uh, but Hulk's the funny one. Hulk steals the show in Thor Ragnarok, and fuck, I wish they had done it as uh, World War Hulk instead of doing uh, Ragnarok like this. 
Um, okay, so yeah, Captain America, First Avenger, uh, join us over on Rabbit slash Camerai, and um, we'll watch it together next Sunday, 9 p.m. Eastern. That's when we do our watches. Before that, we should be doing uh, Dogma, I think, and we'll talk about um, Chasing Amy tomorrow. Uh, oh my god, I should have lots of things to say about that, but um, until you see me next time, this has been hashtag we are movie club. If I see anything else we're up to, go ahead and click the annotations and they'll take you to our other channels. Thanks for watching.